everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Um, I will not be using a mask because of course I'm cooking in my own home and um, I will just go through um, a quick cooking lesson about how to cook jollof rice. Um, jollof rice is a savory dish. Um, it's just rice cooked in a spicy savory tomato sauce um, that is eating in West Africa. I'm making jollof rice as, as I was taught um, by my parents growing up in Nigeria. It is party food and so my memories of jollof rice are um, of food cooked in a, um, you know, in a steel pot over um, a wood fire. So it does have a quality to it that is very, um, that is actually pretty um, smoky. And so I try to recreate that in my kitchen um, using just um, whatever I have and make it very simple. Now there are some purists who may not like my method, but I like my method because it's so hands off and it's as close to the original as you can get. So I'm going to go through all the um, things you need to make jollof rice. Um, the good thing about jollof rice is that it keeps in the fridge for up to a week and tastes actually better on about the third or fourth day. Um, so I'm going to start with the um, simple things. Um, first of all, to create my smoky flavor on the rice, um, I like to um, fry my rice before I cook it in the savory sauce. So I use avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point and I use a quarter cup of avocado oil and I have my four cups of rice measured here and waiting. I like to use jasmine rice just because of the flavor and the fact that the rice just gives me the texture that I want. So that's four cups of jasmine rice. And then um, for my tomato sauce, um, what I like to use is the um, fire roasted um, diced tomatoes in tomato puree um, from Fred Meyer. This is about a dollar. And then I like to add the Hunt tomato sauce. I get this from Costco, you know, like the big box, and this is just one can. So one can of the tomato sauce, one can of the fire roasted tomatoes. And then um, I like to use bell peppers, and I use red bell peppers. So I have here a red bell pepper that has been cut up um, and that's that really huge and that just adds a little bit of sweetness to the tomato sauce. Um, for spice, whenever I can get um, Fresno chilies, I get um, just one Fresno chili and I add to, um, to my um, tomato blend um, that I'm going to use to make the sauce. Um, I like to use a whole clove of um, garlic, actually I use two, so this has been taken apart. Um, you need one huge red onion, I have peeled that, I'm going to blend it all together. So these are all the ingredients for my tomato sauce and I'm just putting that aside. What, what actually adds heat to the savory sauce are habaneros. I love heat, so I use four habaneros. However, if you do not like pepper, I would advise you start with just one. So I use one habanero to one cup of rice, but if you do not like heat, I would suggest use one habanero to four cups of rice. So those are the habaneros, and I'm going to blend it all together with all the other ingredients for my tomato sauce. Next is um, my spices, and I measure them all together into this little ramekin, but what you need for spice is dried thyme and for that I use one tablespoon of dried thyme, um, dried rosemary, I use half a tablespoon, good old curry, I get this from Costco, I use two tablespoons, I get the squeezed ginger from Winko, love it, um, just two squeezes of this, like two quick pumps into my tomato sauce just to give it that flavor. Um, you're going to need some stock cubes, so um, these are two per each one. And so you can use um, vegeta vegetarian stock cubes so that if you want to make this a veggie, um, a veggie um, meal, then you don't have to use chicken stock cubes, but I like to use chicken stock cubes. And you're going to need some more olive oil um, for frying the tomato sauce. And you are going to need a 13 by 9 um, baking pan. Um, I like this one because it has a cover and allows the rice to steam. And this is what we're going to use to finish up the rice after we make the sauce and the rice. 
So first thing I'm going to do, which I like to start out first with, is to fry my rice. That takes quite a while and you got to be quick and you got to be careful as well. So sometimes what I do is turn down the heat such that it will allow the rice to um, fry without actually burning but give you that smoky flavor. So I am going to put my quarter cup of avocado oil in a, um, in a, in a wok. I like to use a wok and then I'm going to fry this rice and I will get that started. And once that is started, I'm going to start on my tomato sauce. And you are going to need a wooden spoon to stir fry this rice because you really want it to um, um, really get brown. It's going to get really brown, but we also do not want it to um, get burnt. So you are going to have to come back every now and again and stir it. So we're just going to leave this to get started. Um, as you can see, it looks kind of kind of oily, um, but don't worry, it's going to turn out just fine. My rice actually looks like, oh my gosh, it's burnt. But that actually is where the flavor, the smoky flavor of the jollof rice comes from. I took the liberty to just kind of turn down the heat a little bit because I need it to be uniformly brown. Um, but don't worry about these little bunt pieces. They will be just fine. Rice is continuing to brown. It smells really nice and fragrant. Maybe a little smoky, but that's exactly what you want. Only a couple of minutes and before you know it, this rice is all burnt and of no, of no use. So you really need to turn down the heat or keep frying the rice like all the while, okay? So I started my oil. I'm going to get into this container, um, this stock pot. We're doing three quarter cup of oil, olive oil. So that's one quarter, two quarters, so half, three quarters. Today, I'm not putting in any sweet onions in here, um, but um, if you want to, you can put in about half a sweet onion, chopped really fine, and fried in the oil, um, but that's totally optional. Um, I'm just gonna let that heat up a little bit, and I am going to um, add my spices, you can see here. But you know what? On second thoughts, I think I want the sweet onion. I can just put about half, um, just to, um, like I said, flavor the oil. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. The onions are just really good. And sorry, this is not gonna be fancy, but um, yeah, it's gonna work. I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit on my onions. I'm gonna wash that real quick. And I am going to get a chopping ball. And I'm gonna just chop a little bit real quick. Get that in the oil. And that would be enough to flavor what I want to flavor. And it's just a little that you need. And that if you don't like onions, fine, just leave it out. Um, I think this is just habit um, from the years that if you're gonna fry anything in oil, you gotta flavor it with onions or something. Okay, so I got the little onions in here. Great, nice and hot. Great. And because it's already hot, I am going to stir my rice one more time. And now the rice is getting, please come closer, thank you. That's my assistant right there. Um, the rice is getting really brown. Um, and I hope you can see how brown the rice is turning here. Great. And so I'm going to get another quick stir fry spoon. And I am going to put my spices in there. And I'm just going to show you what the spices look like when you toss it in the oil. And that's what it looks like. I'm going to let that fry for about a minute. Before you put in the tomato sauce. So just a minute. Get all that fragrance out nicely. Smells good. Smells really, really good. Again, stir the rice. As the rice gets hot, um, it's more likely to burn. So you really want to be like on top of the rice. And now this spices have been frying for about a minute. So I am just going to toss this yummy tomato sauce into the oil. 
too far. And remember what I said about it kind of spilling everywhere? This is why you need a stop stop. It's gonna look really thick and that's what you want. You really do want it to be really thick. And so I am just going to cover this and I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna let this heat do its thing. This is gonna be here for quite a while, about 20, 30 minutes because I really want it to kind of cook down and be a really thick sauce. And then we're going to put it together with the rice. So some other places are gonna be like, oh my gosh, should I burn it? Um, but don't worry, this is very forgiving. But the whole idea is you want this rice grains to look really brown um, to get that flavor in there. So we're going to stir that again. But again, as it stays longer here, it's going to start burning faster. So you got to be more vigilant. But this should be ready in about another five minutes. And so at this point, I am like, oh, no, I have brunch the rice and some days will feel that way and so at this point i am done because i think i have overdone the rice today but this um, recipe is really forgiving even if you feel the rice is burnt it's amazing what happens when it gets into the sauce so i'm going to take it off the heat at this point and i am going to like kind of mix up all the little burnt pieces um with the uh, those that are not burnt um but yes, this is not what I was, <laughs> this is not what I was shooting for, um, but it works. I promise you it works. You will see that at the end, that it does work, but definitely please do not let yours get as burnt as this. Let it sit in here for a little bit um, while I finish on the sauce. So for the next 30 minutes, this rice, it's just gonna sit here and just kind of um, wait. It's gonna wait for the sauce. Um, because you're going to cook jollof rice with the combination of this rice and the sauce. While the sauce is um, stewing, I start my oven because we are going to finish this rice in the oven. I like to use the convex bake function and I do that at um, 325 and I get it started. I'm going to turn down the heat because it tends to splatter. And you have an idea for how thick this sauce really is. All right, it's splashing everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to pour this rice into the sauce to make a thick um, rice sauce mix. So I'm going to turn this off, otherwise I might burn. I am going to go ahead and pour that rice into that sauce. And then we're going to mix it. And I just want you to see what it's going to look like as it's all mixed. Right here, it's nice and red. And the rice looks like it's sitting in this red, rich sauce. And this is what it should look like. It shouldn't look watery. It should look like red, nice and thick. And in just a few minutes, uh, we're going to add the four cups of water. And if you have a pot that sometimes it gets kind of burnt at the bottom, you, you just take all that lovely goodness and scrape it into this sauce. And then I am going to pour this into the baking pan. So the baking pan is right here. It's 13 by 9, no special preparation. You're just going to pour this into the baking pan. And I have my four cups of water boiled and ready to go. I'll rinse it out real good. Take out all that goodness in that pot. And we are going to pour that into this rice. Because this is what is going to cook your rice and have it ready for you and yum. This is our four cups of rice ready in that tomato sauce. And I added the four cups of water. And I'm just going to kind of mix it up a little bit. So it's evenly spread out. And then we are gonna go ahead and cover it. And I'm gonna pop it in the oven. 325 convex bake. Takes about 50 minutes to 60 minutes. 
So we're just gonna wait and see and see how things cook. This is the jollof rice after it's been in the oven for an hour. You can see the little pieces that I said were burnt, but trust me, they give it a good flavor. So I am gonna go ahead and mix it all up. It, the rice is well cooked, it's nice and soft, has a very rich color, and the texture is just perfect. It's not too oily. I mean, it's just the right, the right, the right um, color, the right flavor. So I'm gonna show you in a moment the way I like to eat it. I actually do like to have this with a salad. Um, you can have it with any protein. You can have it with shrimp. You can have it with chicken. You can have it with a piece of steak, like a side. You can also have, sometimes we also eat it with um, fried plantains, which creates a little bit of a balance of sweet. But when plantains are not in, you know, season, like in the winter, then I would just use the good old um, kale salad, the sweet kale salad from Costco, which actually pairs very well with this rice. And so this is what your jollof rice is going to look like. It keeps really well. Um, sometimes I've left it seven days in the fridge. But honestly, the maximum flavor is about day three or four. I don't like it when it's frozen, but I know some people do freeze it. Um, I feel like it's so easy to prepare that I don't really need to freeze it. Um, but it does look really good and rich and just delicious. So I will show you what it looks like beside a little bit of salad. So guys, this is the jollof rice. It is done. I was able to put it together in a little nice shape right there. And this is the kale salad that I said goes really well with it. You can get that from Costco. And you can put any type of protein you want. It could be chicken, it could be shrimp, um, it could be fish, it could be a piece of steak. Um, it's a great side. This is a huge portion anyways, but um, this is what the jollof rice looks like. And I hope you do give it a try in your homes and um, I think you will enjoy it. Right now, my home actually smells really good. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.